In the previous lesson, you've learned how to determine your video card's overclocking capabilities and got acquainted with the main principles. Now it's time to feel the power and strength of overclock. First of all, you need to go through your video card's theoretical potential. Thus, you have to find its specifications and study its overclocking abilities. The average increase you may get with high quality video cards, such as MSI Power Edition, is about 15 to 20 percent. If the video card is third and fourth generation, you are definitely welcome to set the values received from the testers and then wait for the outcome. However, there may be some problems with older video cards because, simply put, the thermal grease hasn't been replaced since you bought it, and simply dusting it once a year is often not enough for proper cooling. Also, the safety system may not operate well because the device is used to be less developed. So, just to be safe, you should start from 75% of the last frequency. This means you shouldn't climb for a plus 100 megahertz right away, but rather start from about plus 75 megahertz. When you have increased the frequency to the desired level, start combustor and monitor the temperatures. If overclocking failed, that means the frequency was too high. Afterburner automatically returns all settings to default. Then you'll have a quite boring and lengthy task. You'll have to play a bit with frequencies and voltage if you want to increase it till you get the best result. If you want your video card to work permanently overclocked, it is recommended to overclock only your GPU and leave the voltage unchanged. This will limit the speed but provide more stable and long-lasting performance. Remember, overclocking shortens the life of your hardware. Well, that's all for today. Next time, we'll tell you how to make your overclocked hardware quieter.